Hello everyone and welcome. With this video, I'm hoping that I'll be able to show you what I consider as a good way of finding major occupancies, but maybe even the better way of finding major occupancies. This is an offshoot of Topic 2, so if you haven't watched Topic 2 yet, please make sure that you do. I'm going to link it up here in the corner or in the description or both or wherever else YouTube is putting this kind of information these days. I also want to get right to the point so you don't have to watch this video because it's going to be a bit of a long one. I'm going to do a whole bunch of examples. So if you're good at this and you already know everything about the building code or enough, let's get to the point. The better way of finding major occupancies if you're just starting with the building code is use Appendix A. That's it. So if uh, that's all you came for, you may go. That was it. Now I'm going to go into a bit more details if you've stuck around. Thank you so much about how to do that with Appendix A. So let's do that. Before I proceed any further, I also want to mention a bit of what the setup is that you see on the screen right now. Uh, right here to right here on the side, you see my tablet. So it's a live view of a tablet that I'm using. That way, I'm actually going to be writing at the same time. So you get more of a feel of what it's like to do this in a tactile fashion. Over here, I have the building code under a document camera, which is showing actually right here at the corner. Okay, And finally, right here at the bottom, there is a highlight of various portions of the building code that maybe might not show well under the document camera. So I'm just going to put them up on screen uh, with these highlights that I'm showing there. Okay, So hopefully this will work out for you. So like I was saying, I'm going to show today for you what I consider the better way of figuring out the major occupancy of a building. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to do it by trying to figure out what the major occupancy is of a police station. Okay. Now, to be fair, I've purposely picked this example, this occupancy police stations, with an end in mind. So I am being a little sneaky about this. But what I want to do is I want us to learn what I say is the better way of figuring out the major occupancy of a building. So you've watched topic two, and if you haven't, maybe you know the building code. So what we're going to do is bring up the building code. I have it right here, okay? And I'm going to go to it, okay? So we have building code right there. I'm going to move over to the document camera to chat about what we do. So if we're in the building code and we want to we want to figure out the major occupancy of a building, we know that we need to go to Division B, Part 3. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip through and find Division B, Part B, right here. And maybe I know that I can look in the table of contents and I find that uh, subsection 3.1.2, classification of buildings or parts of building by major occupancy. So I go find that. And because I read everything under here, you can't quite see it, but it's everything under here. I know to go look at table 3.1.2.1 point 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 right here. Now I'm going to make this maybe a bit bigger for you on screen. Let me bring that up like that. Okay. So now that we're in this table, then you would go here and say, ah, I have all the occupancies broken down by group, division, and a description. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the description of the major occupancy and then see which one matches, in our case, police stations. And then I'll know to find that group and, if necessary, that division. So let's do that. So we're going to go and read top to bottom. Everything is broken down depending uh, on the occupancy. So first we have assembly. Assembly occupancies for production and viewing of performing arts, not a police station. Assembly occupancies not also classified in group A. Well, we come back to this if we don't find anything else. Assembly occupancies of the arena type. Nope, not a police station. Assembly occupancies in which occupants are gathering in the open air. No, not a police station. And A2 maybe, but not likely. We wouldn't classify a police station as an assembly occupancy. Okay. Let's move on to B, detention occupancies. 
But that could possibly be a police station, right? There are detention spaces in a police station. So it might be B1, okay? Uh, B2, B3, their care and treatment occupancies? No. How about C, residential? No, I don't think so. D, business and personal services? Uh, no, I don't think so. E, mercantile occupancies? Nah. How about any of the industrial ones? High hazard, medium hazard, or low hazard industrial occupancies? No. And I want to also remind you of something, okay? Here's a tip. You see how these words are italicized? Well, what that means is that those words can be found under Division A, okay? You found this in uh, Topic 1, when you reviewed Topic 1, that there are certain words that are defined under the definitions in Division A in Volume 1, okay? So you can actually figure out what the building code defines as any of these words that are italicized, okay? So we're done with this, right? We came across that it looks like jails is B1, detention occupancies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, move back to my tablet view right here. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm super happy, right? So I'm going to draw another smiley face. Super happy. And I'm going to make a note that from table... Uh, whoops, nope. Table 3.1.2.1. We found that police stations were a B1 occupancy. Okay? And a B1 occupancy is defined as a detention occupancy. Okay? Voila! We're all done, right? Well, no, that's the whole point of this video. If this had been, say, a test or a quiz or a final exam in our course, this would be a zero. And that's because it's a bad habit to get into to start with uh, this table as the first and only place to go to to find the major occupancy of a building. I claim, I suggest, that the better place to start instead is Appendix A. Okay? So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm actually going to bring myself back. Okay? I claim that Appendix A is a better place to start to figure out the major occupancy rather than Table 3.1.2.1 in Division B, Volume 1, Part 3 of the Ontario Building Code. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get us Appendix A. And luckily for me, I have Volume 2 of the Building Code Compendium right here. So, through the magic of editing, I'm going to make this appear right here like that. Okay? So, let me maybe make this a bit more visible on your screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we have Volume 2 of the Building Code right here. We open it up, if it's been set up correctly when you purchased it and received it, you'll notice that uh, there's a tab here called Appendix A. So I find Appendix A, and when I look at it, let me give you a quick, uh, super quick description of it. The way that Appendix A is laid out is that, except for these A's in front of everything, the references match their corresponding locations under Division B of Volume 1, Ontario Building Code. And the idea is that in Appendix A, you'll actually find explanations or extra information in plain English about things you find in Volume 1 of the Ontario Building Code. Which is super cool because the Ontario Building Code, Volume 1, can be a little bit difficult sometimes to understand. You kind of have to take a course to learn how the Ontario Building Code is written. So the cool thing then is, if we can find 3.1.2.1, in here, maybe we'll find some extra information in plain English. So let's go look for this, okay? 3.1.2.1. So I'm looking through this and I'm prepared, so I can prepare that I know where to find it. 3.1, there we go. Part 3, so there's a whole bunch of stuff to introduce what Part 3 is about, and boom! Look at this. You see this here? 3.1.2.1. 
one, major occupancy classifications. And you know what I just found here? Look at this. Every occupancy is shown here over two pages and every occupancy has literally examples of that occupancy. Yeah, isn't that cool? So you can actually go in here and see if you can find anything that matches police stations. And then you'll know that if it's in there under that heading, it's part of that occupancy. Furthermore, the way that these occupancies are set up, they're all in alphabetical order. So if you're pretty sure that you're looking for police stations, look under P. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look for all through all these occupancies for police stations. Now, to be fair, depending on what the screen you're looking at this from, uh, these, this text may not be super clear for you. So what I'm going to do instead is because I've scanned these pages, I'm going to bring them up in a separate window that might be easier for you to view. So let me bring that up for you. I'm going to bring it up right here like this. Okay, so you can see right here on the side, I've highlighted, I've scanned for you, I've scanned in for you the uh, occupancies. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through all of these occupancies. You start from A1 and you read everything until you get to F3. Everything, you never stop, you read the whole thing. We will see where police stations appears. Okay. So division A1, sorry, group A division one. So A1 for short, I don't see police stations there. So I go to A2, there's police stations there. Again, it's in alphabetical order. So I'm looking for it, police stations, nothing under A2. So I'm gonna move on to A3, anything under A3. No, I don't see anything under A3. Let's try A4. Anything under A4? Uh, no, I don't see anything under A4. How about B1? Anything under B1? Uh, look at this. Police stations right there, huh? But notice what, that it says police stations with detention quarters, which kind of makes sense because we found that B1 was actually detention occupancies, which is where I wrote below, right? B1 detention occupancies. So here you go. Waha! You were right. I was right. I can use that table. My answer to that is, but wait, there is more. Stick around, okay? So let me just uh, remove these two. There we go. Let's keep on looking. See, okay, let's see what else we can find. Remember how I said A1 to F3, you have to read everything. So let's keep going. B2, what do we find under B2? Anything for police stations? No, I don't see anything there. Let's move on to B3. Anything for police stations there? No. Anything under C? Anything about police stations there? No. Anything under D? Anything for police stations there? Oh, look at this. Police stations without detention quarters. So interestingly enough, what just happened is that from Appendix A, we found another possibility for police stations under D. And the way that D is different than B1 is that this is without detention quarters. Okay, so I'm just going to shorten that here like that, detention quarters, like that. So look at that. Had we just used table 3.1.2.1, we would have completely missed the possibility that police stations can also be a D occupancy. Great, we're done, right? No. Remember how I said you have to read all the way to the end. So we did group D, so that means now we move on to group E, right? Because we have to read everything. We don't want to miss any other possible occupancies for police stations. Anything under Group E for police stations? No, I don't see. How about F1? Anything under F1? Anything for police stations? No, I don't see it. How about F2? Anything there for police stations? No, I don't see it. F3? No. So here's the thing, okay? Here's what we found. 
Police stations could either be a B1 occupancy or a D occupancy, depending on whether or not it has detention quarters. So, I know, I know, I was sneaky. I purposely picked this occupancy to make a point that you want to start with Appendix A and not Table 3.1.2.1, especially if you're just starting with the Ontario Building Code. Now, what would you do if you received something like this on a test, an exam, a quiz, or whatever? Well, it would be perfectly fair to ask questions to get clarifications, right? Because you're getting police stations happening in two different occupancies. If you're not allowed to ask questions, typically not the case in our course, okay, but it could be, well, then you can make assumptions, right? It's perfectly valid to then assume that it, I'm going to assume that this police station has detention occupancies. What if this had been real life? What if you were a professional, that is, you're trading your time for money and actually doing this as part of a real assessment of the major occupancy of a police station? And this is all the information you received. Well, what you would do first is reach out to your supervisor and ask them for more information, if any is available. If none is available from them, then maybe you need to go to your client to get information from them to find out if they're looking to design or build or want you to analyze a police station that either has or does not have detention quarters. Okay? Lovely. Now again, I recognize I was being sneaky about this, but I'm trying to make a point. Start with Appendix A, not Table 3.1.2.1. Lovely. Let's move on to another one. Okay? Let the next one. Hi, everyone. I'm just sneaking into my own video just to let you know this is a good place to cut. It's getting to be a long video, so I'm going to put the rest of the examples in a second video, which is going to be linked for you, you know, at the corner or in the description below or wherever else YouTube is putting those links these days. So thank you for your patience, and if you're interested, more examples can be found. Bye!